Hello, guys. Welcome to Cube Day Japan. I know what many of you may be thinking. What is today's lunch menu, right? <laughs> Almost lunchtime, and uh, I'll feel you guys. In my experience, Japan, Cube Day Japan has the best lunch menu, so feel free, it will be the best one. In the meantime, let us uh, take this presentation on Mission Possible, forging a new paradigm in 5G CDK deployment and AI issue navigation. Prakash and I will be the presenters. So, sorry, the agenda for today, let me move this back, okay. Today's agenda is an introduction, uh, followed by an issue statement, then we will talk about the architecture and code flow, followed by a small demo on how we implement this. We'll have our takeaways to conclude the presentation. Um, my name is Marco Gonzalez. I'm from Lima, Peru, and um, I'm working as a 5G solution architect at Ericsson Japan. In my free time, I enjoy doing AWS community builder topics about 5G and some uh, tech. And when I have time, I do sports. Okay? Over to you, Prakash. Cool. Thank you, Marco. And hi, everyone. My name is Prakash, and I hope you guys are having a good time here. A brief introduction of mine. My name is Prakash, and I'm from India. And I have been working in Accenture Japan for the past one year as a cloud architect. And I love to do snowboarding. And I enjoy going to gym with my friend Marco here. And yeah, so this is an introduction. And before we delve into the presentation more, a disclaimer. So this presentation only contains our personal opinions, and it does not represent our employer views. Now that we are done with the uninteresting part, let's move to the interesting one. So what are we trying to achieve through this presentation today? What are we going to discuss? So as we know, like any technological shift, like moving from VMs to containers, or 3G to 4G, or 4G to 5G, 5G deployment has its own unique set of challenges. And today, Marco and I are going to discuss these challenges. Not just discuss, but we are going to explore these challenges and see how we can transform these challenges into opportunities. And as part of that problem statement, we have mainly categorized this into three key areas. So the first one is deployment, second is monetization, and third is sustainability in 5G. Now, let's look at the first challenge, deployment. Like, as we know, the technical operators, like the technical teams when in the telecom operators are deploying the 5G, they mainly face two major challenges. First one is the speed, and the second one is the complexities. So when we say complexities, what does it mean? Like let's say when we're trying to deploy the 5G core, and in the actual deployment, there are telecom workforces. Generally, they are professionals aged from 35 to 50. And they find it increasingly challenging to make sure that these technologies are efficient and error-free, which is really vital in telecom operators, as we know. And also, we need to understand the speed of the deployment is actually important. And delays in deploying this 5G can lead to missed opportunities and also a reduced competitive edge in the telecom market. So this part is really important for the telecom industry. And the second part is monetization. So according to a GSMA survey, around 40% of private companies are still looking for effective ways to monetize their own edge 5G solutions. And as we know, if we don't monetize, then it will lead to a reduction of our business growth. So this is also a really important part for telecom operators. And the third part is sustainability post-deployment. So let's say we deployed our 5G core as part of our Kubernetes cluster, and the ongoing maintenance on the troubleshooting process actually may take time, and it consumes lots of resources as well. And as we know, the inefficient day two operations can actually lead to extended downtime, which ultimately affects the customer satisfaction and loyalty as well. So how can we solve these three problems in 5G core? So for that, me and Marco have come up with one solution where we'll try to integrate our 5G core with CDK and AI. So by leveraging CDK, we can actually deploy 5G services as rapidly as possible. And we don't actually need to have any experience with the coding as well. And by integrating with AI, we can actually resolve the issues before it even occurs. And 
people doesn't need to have any kind of experience with the coding or they don't even need to see how we can explore these things like how we how we need to look at these problems yeah so as part of these problems these are the solution we came up with and let's look let's take a closer look at the architecture of how the solution is so if you see here in this part we tried to deploy the vpc we have our own private subnet and we have two public subnets and we deployed bash and host and we had a nat gateway here so all of this the right side part which you see here is deployed through cdk so there will be two main actors present in this whole architecture one will be the developer itself and the second one will be the actor so the developer that guy is the one who is responsible for writing the code for all of this infrastructure like for example we like for example let's say the actors are me as a developer and marco as an operator so me myself as a developer i'll write the code for sorry yeah i'll write the code for deploying this vpc i'll write the code for deploying this private subnets public subnets all of this whole infrastructure and in my subnet in my private subnet i'll try to have my kubernetes cluster and if you see here on top of the kubernetes cluster we have our own 5g network functions and we have our 5g network functions for core like amf smf upf etc and yeah so this whole thing is deployed to cdk and we will collect our operation logs through open source log collection agent fluent bit so once we deploy this whole thing through cdk this is already set up the data integration workflow which you see here so once this is deployed automatically it will integrate with this the right part of the site so let's take a look at the data flow how it happens first let's say we have lots of 5g network functions here and let's assume that there is one issue with this specific amf pod first what we'll try to do is we have our own repository and we have our own documentation of the past resolutions like let's say i have my own company and in that that is a custom solution and it does not have anywhere so we have our own past issue, issue resolution tickets and we have our own past documentation how to operate the system everything so that will be stored in our storage and as well as we'll try to take the input of the operation logs which are collected through this cluster and the log collection agent fluent bit will collect the agent will collect the uh, logs and it will forward to the event bridge and in our lambda we have our own custom written code here in that code we can apply some filters and we can remove the data which we don't need and we can only take the data which we need and we'll input it as well as we'll input it as well as this uh, solution on the documentation which we have for the storage purpose now this one we'll use as a knowledge base for, uh, input and if you see in the data integration workflow once we collect the information here that will be chunked into data that will chunk into vectors and that will be stored inside the vector database and here let's say as a telecom engineer or the operator who does not have any experience he just need to run like for example let's say he is the guy who monitors this cluster and sees like there is some issue with specific amf component and once he sees that he'll just try to copy the error code and he just try to put the prompt like i see so and so error and how can i resolve it because this is a custom solution it's not available online so once he sees that the prompt box and he'll try to put that query and the prompt from lama3 and it will go to the similarity search and from the similarity search we'll get this uh, probable solution and that will input to the prompt box as a solution so this is a high level architecture of how it happens now let's look at the call flow of this whole architecture so we mainly divided the whole architecture in three phases in the first phase we call it as cdk phase and as part of cdk phase if you see as i mentioned here two operators developer and operator first the developer myself so i'll try to prepare the kubernetes code and i'll try to share it with an operator who does not have any experience with the code itself and once he logins to that he just need to run one single command he doesn't need to have any experience here and once that cdk deploy command is run through ide that there are some post calls this there are some api calls if you see here and after that the kubernetes will return some 200 error 200 okay then the operator will see that the cluster itself is ready then he'll confirm with the developer that yeah we are okay then the developer he'll try to install like yeah we can even move the fluent bit part to operator and we can include inside the cdk as well but as a phase one we try to keep it for the developer itself 
So we can install this Fluent Bit open source agent, and we'll come from here again. So once our infrastructure here is ready, we'll try to do a Helm install of all of our 5G code here. So this is our first phase. And in the second phase, we call it as a RAG phase. So here, we see if you see, there's only one operator. And there's a put call and post call going on between here. And we'll explain this more as part of demo by Marco. So let's keep this as of now. And let's go to the final phase, navigator phase. So here, we have only one actor here. And that will be the operator, telecom operator. So let's say he'll monitor the Kubernetes cluster. He's a level one employee. So he does not need to know anything. He'll just see the monitoring of the Kubernetes cluster, and he notices that, yeah, there is some specific error which is going on here. And we need to see what's happening. So he'll just copy the code, which he sees in the monitor. And he'll try to create a prompt to this chat box. And what this chat box will do is it'll try to take the input from this guy. And he'll try to prompt and query to the LLM endpoint, which we have already. And the LLM endpoint will check from the knowledge base, and it'll try to do the similarity search. And it will send the answer back to the operator. So these, three, these are the three phases we try to, dip, we try to develop for this uh, solution. And let's look at this solution in more detail through a demo. Marco, over to you. Thank you, Prakash. OK, let's move on to the demo part. In the presentation, I will guide you guys to the some explanations. But if you want to actually check the code, comments, and some details, please refer to this GitHub. OK, great. So I'm going to use Prakash architecture, which is a really top notch, to explain a bit what I'm going to implement. So Prakash mentioned talk about this big red block here, TDK deployment. For those who are not very familiar with TDK, it stands for Cloud Development Kit. In simple words, it's how a developer can implement infrastructure as a code. What are the benefits of having code? And this will be in the, in the GitHub repo, so don't need to um, get too much detail on it. Um, one of the benefits of having a CDK is I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I don't need to code from scratch. I can just use libraries and blueprints, which I did. I used the EKJS blueprint to just roll out an EKS cluster. You remember Prakash part talking about the Fluent bit, which is key in our project. Well, how I did it, just calling a class and defining the actual Fluent bit installation and filtering. I'm using, I'm using TypeScript. If you guys are Python lovers or Golang lovers, feel free to use your own preference. After that, I just need to prefer a few details, my AWS account, uh, where I'm going to deploy this cluster. And if I'm going to go fancy with the, any feature or plugins, we have the add-ons. I can add, for those who are Argo CD lovers, this a, a, a plugin, an add-on ready to use. Cluster, BPC, core DNS, you call it. And Prakash mentioned something. One command will do the trick, and it does. TDK deploy is the only command you need to deploy all this infrastructure. OK, so first block is done. Now let's move on to the other one, next part. There is a key function to implement this solution, and it's how to collect the live logs, the operational logs, something many companies or many users avoid to collect. How we do is, um, we definitely leverage on the actual technology any cloud provider has. And this is just the events um, for those who want to check how this is done. This is like a, the behind the scenes, how CDK works, how this um, service will convert the code in actual um, API calls to the AWS. But let's move on to the Lambda. So what is Lambda? Lambda is going to be our tool that's going to make this filter in place. Um, for this Lambda function, or this serverless function, I use Python code, um, and pretty much just want to highlight few items, which are this one. It is input, action, and output. The input here is going to be all the logs that Fluentbit is going to collect. 
the destination or the output is going to be the filter logs stored in this H3 bucket or a, a storage that we are going to use. The prefix is something I use to limit the data. I don't need all the application system data. I only need the application-wise, which is from the open 5GS code or application. Last, you have the number of days, which you can adjust. In this demo, I use one day, um, but you can talk about minutes, hours. Um, and the value of this, uh, this is just basically AWS way of work. I define these environment variables here. Take note of this, of this name, we, we will see later. And this is the actual group name that contains all the EKS cluster implemented. So then this part is done, this part is completed, let's move to the rack part or how the actual context is done. First, we need to refer to the, this green box here. This is a storage, like a box, or where to put stuff. So for this cloud provider, it has the S3 storage, and take a look of these three, two folders here. The first one is gonna be the folder that's going to store the Fluent Bit logs. As you can see, it has a prefix, which is the one I used, and it pretty much has the raw data that I'm going to, I want to process. The other folder is includes our know-how or the documentation being here. And this is what Prakash talked about. Every company is different. Every company has different database documentation. So this is how this is when I insert the data into our storage to be then applied. Okay, so I have the data. Then I need to go to this very appealing and uh, confusing steps. Okay, I can talk about um, data chunking, embedding, vector models, but you guys, me myself, will be a bit confused. So let's not reinvent the wheel. Of course, there are open source that can do this, and you can develop special weekend, but if I'm going to use this in a scale, I'm going to scale the solution, I need something that can handle this. And our choice was AWS Amazon Bedrock. Why? Because among the many features it has, it has this called knowledge base. This pretty much automates the whole process of get the data, create chunks, split the data, create embedded this, embedding them, and then create this database, vector database. How it works? Very UI friendly. I just need to upload or create this, define a name, then add some permissions, and just pretty much select data source. In our case, as I mentioned before, I use S3. And that's it, you guys are good to go. The time it takes depends on data, of course. If I upload terabytes of data, it will take an hour or so, more than two hours. In, our, in this demo, it took around two hours to upload all the data. But the following updates uh, took just minutes, so it really depends on the, how heavy your data is. All right, so we have this block checked, we have this big red one. Let's finalize for the backend API and a test. For this uh, particular test, um, I'm going to refer to the BS code back. This is also mentioned in the repo, so please don't um, feel free to just consider this. This is the backend API that is using Langchain and the Langchain AWS open source solution to basically um, call um, the LLM model, add the knowledge base, and make the question. In our latest test, in order to give you guys the best. Uh, we tried Llama, we tried Anthropic, we tried um, OpenAI, uh, but uh, based on some limitations and uh, the results, I believe Anthropic is a, is a good to go um, for this demo. So I defined the model here. As you can see, it's just one line of code. Then I add some arguments, or let's say features. Um, temperature is how random you want your answer to be. Uh, max tokens is how many tokens you want to use for the question and for the answer. It's a bit of uh, some AI top, uh, terminologies. Uh, but let's move to the actual test. So how do I know that I'm actually using this database? This part. This line of code is referring the knowledge database. If I go to the, um, this storage that I have here, you will see there is one 
knowledge-based ID. I'm just copying and using this in my code to refer to this. That's the way you guys do it. Well, then um, let's put in situation Prakash explained before. I'm a telecom engineer. I don't know anything about um, coding, and, but I have an issue. I need to fix it. So I will ask this prompt, hey, my AMF node is having this error. Just one statement. And I have this log. I don't know what it is. But it's a log that give, says something about AMF and that there is some information. OK, so right. Having this demo in place and just need to call the Python script, it will give me one answer. And it will take a few seconds. I'm trying to buy time here. Um, how it works, it will have the question plus the context that I have uploaded, and it will give me the answer based, of course, on the LLM model and, of course, based on the data input. All right. Thank God it worked. So if you can see here, this is your AI issue assistant telling you, hey, Marco, you don't need to check into the TGPP uh, standard. Just follow these steps, and it will work. And if it doesn't work, I will tell this chat box, hey, it didn't work. So it will train it. It will improve. That's the whole thing about this Gen AI tool. Not to just have question and answer, but have a feedback and improve. And using the context that I, that I input, so it, it makes better. Well, that's it. That's a demo uh, in short. I'm going to move back to the takeaways notes and wrap up. OK. So guys, um, today I just wanted to bring uh, three topics, three items here. I showed this demo how um, Gen AI can improve telecom issue resolution using open source technology and of course some uh, magic of the uh, cloud solutions. In our test, uh, we achieved over 60% time reduction, average time reduction. What does it mean? The time that I take looking into the websites, asking experts, and uh, sending emails and such, I can just ask the chatbot. It will get the same answer, even better. The second one is because this is an open source meet meetup, is to promote the open source collaboration. Prakash just mentioned, telecom engineer, myself, Prakash developer, we combine force and we make something that's even better. CDK engage, encourage developers. This OpenGI encouraged me to use technologies to make a final result much better. And the last is, of course, the future enhancement. We can make this better, guys, and you can also. This solution is focused on giving customer feedback to implement. What is the next step? It will just say, Marco, I have this option. Can I implement? And you just say yes or no. You will be the prover, not the executor. And at the end, once this model is trained, once it has enough data, it doesn't need to ask me. It would just, if there is a low medium, sorry, low medium risk, it will just execute, just like that. So we wanted to wrap up this uh, presentation with this uh, code that I found just today, and it pretty much summarizes what I've been trying to explain. Amazon CEO says like a Gen AI coding save 4,500 developer years. Guys, who are, those who are developers, those who use ChatGPT every day, I think this is a huge achievement. And um, in today's demo, we're trying to show how it's possible in telecom, in many industries. So guys, it's up to you to keep developing and keep improving. With that, this is a wrap up. And uh, we say thank you so much for being today with us. And I uh, hope you enjoyed lunch time. Thank you.